Now, in this video, we'll be talking about conditional statements in programming languages. Now, writing conditional languages is actually really, really, really important to actually build your own logic and write your program based on that logic. So, in any program that you're writing, you will have like, I don't know, like 90% need or necessity for you to actually write a conditional statement in order to, you know, write or build your logic and in order to so solve that particular question or that particular scenario or to write a program for a given scenario, you will definitely need to, use, to make use of uh, conditional statements. So, Let's start this by actually discussing about what is exactly meant by a condition. What is this conditional statement? Uh, why exactly is this used for? So, for example, let's take a scenario. Let's take a scenario that uh, in your country, your government is providing student loans to the students in your country. So let's say this is a scenario. Your government providing student loans to student in your country. Uh, all the students I mean so uh, after like let's say two years or three years your government you know it, it, it doesn't want to provide student loans to as many students as it provided to until now because I don't know maybe it has some lack of budget or something so government obviously will you know will actually try to find a solution for this they will try to decrease the number of students who will be getting a student loan like for example a government can, uh, you know can can make sure that the student loan is only given to worthy students to students who will rightly make use of the student loan something like that so i think um, for example let's say in order to solve that government introduces a new condition let's say it introduces a new condition that students with only the cgpa more than eight will be getting or will be eligible to get a student loan let's say a government brings up this condition and puts it in this scenario so here we have one condition and that condition is that students only the students who have a cgpa more than eight will be getting or will be eligible to get a student loan right so that's one condition right here so if any student comes up and he applies for a student loan what government does is before actually giving a student loan to that particular student it has to you know first check this condition what's the condition here well the condition is as i've told you the student must have a cgpa greater than eight so for, so for example let's say uh, if a student who has a CGPA 8.3 applies for a student loan, the government first checks the CGPA of the student which is 8.3 and since 8.3 is greater than the threshold value 8 which is set by the government, uh, the government will then be uh, able to give the student loan to the student, to that particular student. And in the same way, if a student who has a CGPA of 7 goes and applies for a student loan, the government will not or the government will just simply reject his request because his, his CGPA is not greater than 8. Right, so that's one condition here. And similarly, government can introduce many conditions to this scenario. For example, later, uh, government still tries to decrease the number of students getting the student loan. So it may as well introduce another condition like, for example, let's say students only within the age group of, I don't know, uh, 16 to 20, 21, something like that will be eligible for a student loan. So now, uh, whenever a new student applies for a student loan, government now has to check for two conditions. The first condition is that the student has uh, more than 8 CGPA and the second condition is that the age of the student must be within 16 to 21. So only if these two conditions are passed, any particular student will be able to get a student loan from the government. So, yeah, I think now we got a basic understanding about what is meant by a condition and what's meant by a condition in a particular scenario. What's meant by this condition passing or what's meant by this condition failing, right? So in the same way in programming languages too, you may want to introduce conditions to your program so that you don't want, a, you know, certain parts of your code to be executed if your condition is false or if your condition fails. So uh, there may be many cases that you know certain lines of your code should only be executed if a particular condition is satisfied and if it's not satisfied you don't want these 
some set of lines to be executed and you want the execution to skip to another line, to skip these lines to another line, right? So in that case, you will have to use conditional statements in programming languages. So since now we are on Java, we'll be talking about conditional statements in Java, how to make use of conditional statements in Java, and in the next video, we'll be doing that in Python. So all right, so let me quickly go ahead and write up the template for this Java program. So I'll say, right, so here I have the uh, token, I'm oh, sorry, here I have the template to write a Java program. And first of all, actually, uh, let me initialize, declare and initialize two variables. I'll say int a equal to two, b equal to three. Right, so I have declared and initialized two integer data type variables, a and b, with values two and three respectively. So now, uh, let's say I have a condition, uh, just for a sample, just for a demo. I have a condition in my, uh, I don't know, in my, in, in my program that, uh, a should be greater than B. Let's say A and B are not like uh, our user inputs. We are not deciding what A and B are. Let's say the user himself is deciding what A and B are, right? So in that case, uh, we want we want to write a condition in our program and we want uh, A to be greater than B. So, right? So in that case, we'll make use of a conditional statement, right? So we will say if, so if is the, is the word, right? is the token that we use uh, in Java to actually write a conditional statement, to actually start writing a conditional statement. So after typing if, you need to type in an open and close parenthesis like that. And inside this open and close parenthesis, you need to type in something uh, whose value will be a Boolean data type value because conditional statements are nothing but validation of Boolean statements. So how do you say that a particular condition in your program has passed if that value of that particular condition is true, that means the condition has passed. If the value of that particular conditional statement is false, it means the condition has, uh, has failed. So obviously you will need to type in something inside this open and close parenthesis, a Boolean data type value. So you need to type in uh, something which will return a true or a false, not anything else, right? So um, let's say a greater than b. So I'm using, I'm making use of compassion operators here. So I'm saying int a greater than b. So greater than is a compassion operator which will return a true or false. So after uh, typing this, you have to actually type in an open and close flower braces. So this open open uh, flower brace actually indicates the start of this if, if, if block here and this close flower brace indicates the uh, end of this if block here. So everything that is written in between this open and close flower braces actually belongs to this if statement. So that's the terminology we use in Java. So that is one if statement. So what happens is, uh, you know, when your program gets executed until here, so the first line, what it does is it uh, declares two variables A and B and it initializes them to two and three respectively. So after this, it's going to come to the next line, which is an if condition, which is a conditional statement. So it says if A greater than B. So what it does here is it first goes ahead and uh, checks this condition. So what's the value of A here? It's two. And what's the value of B? It's three, right? So it's going to check if two is greater than three. So what is the Boolean value we'll get after, after doing this, uh, after doing this condition? We're going to get false because two is not greater than three, right? So this value is going to be false. So the whole value of this conditional statement is false. So what do you mean by false? False means that the condition is not satisfied. So I've told you that everything within this if log, that is everything uh, within this open and closed flower braces will be executed only if this condition has passed or in other words, only if this condition returns a true value, right? So anything that is written in between these uh, open and closed flower braces will not be executed. So let me show you a demo. I'll say system.out.println. I'll, I'll type in something like uh, condition passed, right? So when will this system.println statement be executed? Uh, that is when this condition is satisfied or the Boolean data type value of this condition is true. But in this case, it will be false. So let's go ahead and check this out. So let's uh, compile this file firstly. It's Java C conditions in Java dot Java. Perfect. Now let me execute that. It's Java conditional statements. 
So as you can see, uh, it, it actually did print nothing. So it just started the program and the program came to an end. Uh, that is because this system or println statement is actually not executed and you know the reason why it's not executed, right? Uh, that is because this condition failed and this statement will get executed only if this condition passed. So that's the reason why this statement is not executed and the program just started and it declared an initial as variables and then it came to an end. That's it. No, no print statement is actually executed there. So just for the sake of understanding, let's uh, turn this condition statement uh, the other way around. Let's say b greater than a and in this case this will be true. So which means uh, everything that is in between these open and closed power braces or in other words within this if block will get executed. Which means this system of print and statement will also get executed. Right? So let's go ahead and compile this and let's see it ourselves if uh, the system of print and statement is actually getting executed. So I'll say something like that and there you go. You, you, you can see that the output prints condition passed which means this statement over here is actually executed because this condition is satisfied right so yeah that's it that's really simple really simple to understand so and also this is not the only type of uh, this is not the only type of conditional statements we have so with this if block over here you can also extend this conditional statement by adding an else statement right there so you can just type in after after you know after uh, this whole if block i mean after the end of this flower brace you can type in an else statement you can say else and then you can say open and close flower brace so this everything uh, all this stuff is actually the else block and this is the if block so what this means is uh, if this condition right here which is mentioned in the if block is not satisfied that means that we know that uh, nothing in here, nothing that is written in this if block will be executed if this condition is not satisfied, right? So in that case, if you include an else statement, what happens is if this condition is not satisfied, the control or the program execution skips to this else statement. So everything which is written, written inside this else block will get executed. Will get executed. Yes. So. Um, you know, you can just type in any statement over here to just see. So I'll just uh, copy the statement and paste it here, and I'll say condition not passed, right? So let's go ahead. Let's go. Let's go ahead and uh, look at it ourselves. So Java C compile and then run it, and it says condition passed, right? So let us turn this the other way around, and let's say if a greater than b, and we know that this condition will not be satisfied, or in other words, this condition will fail because. 2 is not greater than 3. So the program execution will skip to the else part automatically and everything that is written inside this else block will be executed which includes this system out print line which print out which prints out condition not passed to the output. So when we execute this we must be getting condition not passed as the output. So let's compile this and let's run this and there we go it says condition not passed which means this statement is printed over here because this condition fails and the control or the program execution skips to the else part of this if statement. Right? So yeah, that's great. That's how if else works. So basically if else is not the only type of conditional statements we have in programming language. We have another type known as if else if. So uh, in addition to this else you can also type in else if and you can write a condition inside this uh, open close parenthesis and yeah it works that way as well now instead of doing this you could also just remove the else part and and type in if and then write another condition right here right so both of these things work in a same way but they are a little bit different from each other so let's see how they are different from each other so for example, let's say here we have uh, A, B, C, and D, four variables of integer data type, each having their own values. And first of all, I'm comparing uh, if A is greater than B, and uh, in this case, let's say, um, if, let's say, B is greater than A. So here I'm comparing A is greater than B, and here I'm comparing B is greater than A. So let's say here I'm printing condition one passed if A is greater than B, and in the same way, I'll just print out condition um, condition 2 passed right and also I don't need these extra two variables right there I don't even know why I typed them 
Right, so when our program starts executing, first of all, it checks if A is greater than B, and if it's uh, true, then this system of print learning statement will get executed. And then, after this condition, after it comes out from this first if block, it goes to the second if block, which is this, and checks for this condition if B is greater than A, and if this condition is satisfied, it'll get ex it'll execute this one right here. Right, so let's go ahead and compile this and see what would be the result. So I'll just compile that first. Java C conditions in Java or Java. Right. So there you go, it printed out condition 2 passed because uh, B is greater than A and the first condition fails because A is not greater than B. Whereas the second condition which says B is greater than A is actually true. So this system or print line statement gets executed. So what happened right now is when we started our program, we know that, uh, I mean intuitively we know ourselves that any one of these two statements will only be true. These two statements can't be true at the same time because we have initialized the values of the variables a and b ourselves. We know that the value of the variable is uh, 2, of a is 2 and of b is 3. So we know that either a, is greater, either a can be greater than b or b can be greater than a. So we know that either of these things will be true and we definitely know that both the conditions A is greater than B and B is greater than A can't be true at the same time, right? So we know that only one of these two conditions will pass and only one of these two if blocks will be executed. But what we did here is we wrote two if statements, right? So we wrote two if blocks and first if block checks for the first condition which is A greater than B and if it's true then that first if block will get executed and the second if block will check B is greater than A even though the first if block passed I mean even though if this condition has passed and even though if all this stuff is executed even after executing that even after coming out of that if block it will not skip this if block the second if block instead it still checks for this condition and we know obviously that this condition is going to fail as I've told you intuitively we know that right so what we are having here is just like an excess kind of thing because we don't want to check the second condition at all because we know that if one condition passes the second condition is obviously going to be false or it's going to fail for sure we know uh, in this case we know that for sure so in, in in the same way in any scenario that you're writing your program you might have this necessity of you know you might have or you might intuitively know that if one condition in your program pass a corresponding uh, second condition will fail for sure in that case you don't want your your program or your computer to actually even go and check the second condition because you already know it's false so you don't want it to check the second condition so in that case right there you use the else if statement so instead of uh, typing in if right there if I type in else space if that is how you write else if in uh, in Java so what happens now is when the program execution starts uh, first of all it comes over here it, it checks this condition a greater than B and if this condition is actually true or if it's satisfied uh, all this if block will get executed and after executing this after coming out of this if block it goes to this else if because there is else if there and not just if this whole thing will not be executed the program will just skip all this part right here because the first condition already passed so if in case the first condition has failed in that case this the control will skip to this else if part and then it will check for this condition and only if the second condition passed it will come inside this block you know what I'm trying to say right so for example let's go ahead and execute this and uh, yeah let's go ahead and execute that let's say Java C conditions in Java and then Java condition statements so there you go it again says condition 2 passed but just in order to see the difference in outputs let's turn it the other way around here let's say uh, B greater than A and here let's say A greater than B 
So obviously we know that this condition will be true because 3 is greater than 2 so this stuff will get executed. So we just want to see the difference in the executions or in the applications of if and else if, right? So what we'll do is uh, let's say first we replace else if with just if. So if you turn it the other way around and if you execute that stuff, uh, you will still you will see the appropriate result, appropriate correct result. So it says condition one passed right here. So we really can't uh, you know see the difference between if and else if right there. So if I replace it with else if then we are actually uh, actually saving many resources for the computer because our computer doesn't need to check the second condition so it saves some resources some processing resources of our computer and it also saves some time I mean for a simple program like this time will not really matter because whatever you write however messy messy your program is your computer will still execute it in a matter of milliseconds but consider you're writing a very very big program which uses a lot of computer resources a lot of memory and all that stuff in such cases you should be really careful about uh, how you're writing your program and you should be really looking forward to reduce any excess things in your programs for uh, when I say excess things I also mean this if statement so you want to eliminate the you know, you know you want to eliminate the if statements with and replace them with uh, I mean you you need to eliminate multiple if statements and replace them with else if statements wherever you need it and I don't mean that in every in every case scenario you will have to replace multiple if statements by if else if because in some cases you will need to actually check each and every condition even after the first condition passed you may still not be sure about whether the second condition will be passed or failed right in that cases you will have to use multiple if statements instead of else if statements but uh, whenever you you can whenever you know for sure about the conditions in your program whether one condition fails if or the other condition passes in all those cases you will have to actually use else if instead of if and that is actually a good programming technique so yeah that's how you do it and one more thing is you can obviously you know do any any number of else if statements so you can type in another else if statement and you can write another condition right here and yeah you can just type in how how, how many ever else if statements you want and same as the case with if statements you, you can type in how many number of if statements you want in your program it all depends on you on and uh, how you want your program to work so yeah in the next video we'll be seeing the same but in python language so stay tuned